Welcome back. So top on the brief this morning, the Court of Appeals sitting in Abuja has affirmed the judgment of the Federal High Court, which set aside the 800 billion naira budget passed by five members of the River State House of Assembly, which was led by Edison Ahir led group. The appellate court on Thursday dismissed the appeal filed by the governor of River State, Simlai Fubara, on grounds that it lacked merit. Court of Appeal affirms the decision of Justice Motosho and in affirming same clearly stated that Right Honorable Martin Chike Amewule is the authentic speaker of the River State House of Assembly. Well, the River State government has insisted that the appeal court judgment on Thursday in Abuja did not reinstate the Martin Amewili led faction of the State House of Assembly by any stretch of the imagination. In a statement signed by the State Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice Israel Dagogo Iboroma, SCN in Port Harcourt on Thursday, the government clarified that the Amewili and 26 others had defected on December 11, 2023, adding that their seats became automatically vacant from the day that they announced their defection from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress to the whole world. The Attorney General insisted that the issue of defection of Amewili and 26 others was never before the Federal High Court and the Court of Appeal Abuja, and therefore no court has legitimized their membership of the House of Assembly on the basis of their defection. And to Abuja now, the Senate is asking the federal government to deny allocations to Benue local government councils, rejecting the outcome of the recently conducted local government elections in the state. This resolution was adopted after the Senate minority leader, Senator Abamoru, raised concern over what he describes as a sham and an abuse of the constitution. The upper chamber also condemned the Benue State Independent Electoral Commission over the conduct of the October the 5th 2024 exercise. All chairs of government in the Federation should immediately comply with the recently pronounced judgments of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, particularly relating to local government accounts and then the funds of local government going directly to the local government for its utilization to improve the lot of Nigerians. And I assure you that the 10th Senate working with our colleagues in the House of Representatives will alter any aspects of our constitution, amend any section of our laws to ensure full autonomy. The House of Representatives is asking the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission to provide comprehensive information on funds recovered from ministries, departments and agencies on the COVID-19 intervention funds. The House made the resolution after considering the report of the Committee on Public Accounts on a motion on the alleged mismanagement of the funds. The House is also asking the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation to provide evidence of remittances and mop-up of unspent funds on COVID-19 intervention funds from the MDAs. And some stakeholders in Nigeria's petroleum sector have described the latest hike in petrol price as the beginning of full deregulation of the sector, while some other economic experts believe that it is not yet Uhuru as further increase in pump price should not be ruled out. But for many Nigerians, the ripple effect of persistent rise in petrol price continues to put more strain on their finances and overall cost of living. The Trade Union Congress TUC is asking the federal government to urgently create a special foreign exchange window for oil marketers to enable them access dollars at a cheaper rate in order to push down the price of petrol. And that's according to the union uh, such, that such special intervention could push down the pump price from what it is now to about seven or 800 naira per liter. President of the TUC, Mr. Festo Susifu, who blamed the recent price hike on the high exchange rate, also asks the federal government to make petroleum products available so that the long queues will disappear. 
And the Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP, has described the recent increase in the price of petrol as outrageous and a deliberate attempt to further impoverish Nigerians. Addressing a State of the Nation conference in Abuja, spokesperson of the coalition, Mr. Mark Adibayo, laments that in less than 18 months of President Tidubu's administration, fuel prices have been increased by over 2,000 percent, which has exponentially increased poverty, hunger, and general suffering of Nigerians. The NNPC Limited had on Wednesday increased the pump price of premium motor spirit from 897 naira per litre to 1,030 naira per litre. And more visits are continue, continuing to pouring at the Dungote refinery in Lagos as the Prime Minister of Grenada, Dixon Michel, is the most recent to tour the refinery. Prime Minister Dixon was received and led on the tour of the refinery by the chairman and CEO of the Dungote Group, Al Haji Aliko Dungote, and the other top ranking staff. And Vice President Mr. Kashim Shatima has called for a concerted approach to addressing gender based barriers to quality education. He made the call at a two day international conference on the girl child, girl child education in Nigeria organized by the Nigerian Governors Forum in collaboration with the World Bank and other partners, which held at the banquet hall of the presidential villa Abuja. The vice president also emphasizes the need for increased budgetary allocation by federal and state governments. And more stories now, this time in business. Well, before business to security matters, the military says another notorious terrorist leader known as Mehi Jabi and his combatants terrorizing communities in Taraba State has been eliminated. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, the Director, Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, explains that the military is winning the war against insurgents as it continues to review its operations to ensure a safer Nigeria. General Buba also disclosed that during the week under review, troops neutralized 165 terrorists and arrested 238 others, while 35 perpetrators of oil theft were arrested just as it rescued 188 kidnapped hostages. And Nigeria's contributory pension assets hit a new milestone of 21.14 trillion naira at the end of August, up from 20.79 trillion naira recorded in July. That's according to latest data from the National Pension Commission, PENCOM. The amount represents a 345.65 billion naira increase from its previous level, following a modest rise in the number of contributions to the pension assets. The PENCOM reports also show that the number of registered contributors, otherwise called retirement savings account, also grew more than 10.45 million at the end of August, up from 10.41 million RSA holder, holders recorded in July. And outside our shores, at least six people are confirmed dead after Hurricane Milton passed through Florida through the total number of, though the total number of deaths could rise as rescue workers make their way through floodwaters and debris. More than three million homes and businesses were without power, while Governor Ron DeSantis says more flooding is expected in the coming days. Florida residents are being warned not to visit areas hit by Hurricane Milton after it brought tornadoes, floods, and storm surges to the state. And in sports, with less than 24 hours to the Super Eagles 2025 African qualifier against Libya, coach Augustin Eguavon says the team is well prepared for the challenge and the goal is to pick maximum points against the Mediterranean Knights. Leaders Nigeria have four points from their two matches so far, one point ahead of Benin Republic and two ahead of Rwanda. And so that let's hope that all those points come through from the Super Eagles and they're well positioned for their first few matches when the games eventually begin. Of course, you know that we'll be here to give you all of those high points. And what are you saying about the other 
big stories from the increase in the pump price of petrol to um, local government administrations and the call by the National Assembly uh, that funds should not be given to those states where selections were done rather than elections and how many more actually had elections.